Dia Browser from the browser company who has also done Arc is on the topic for a lot of people talking in Reddit, X, all these different places. And for me, I'm actually using Perplexity's Comet, which I got an invite to. A lot of folks are looking for it. I don't know how they send it out, but I got it. I love it. I actually had Dia first and tried it. And then the same day I got Dia, I got Comet and I wound up uninstalling Dia just because it didn't work for me. A lot of people are asking, why did it not work for you? So I reinstalled it and just wanted to give you guys a walkthrough. You'll see over here when you download Dia, I think it's kind of cool though that it's, hey, you wanna set it as default or try for one week? Okay, uh, so I don't. It gives you that prompt over here. So here's why I'm not a huge fan of Dia. Now I understand they're going to be coming out with more different fixes, tweaks, changes down the road, but this is just my opinion. This, you could feel totally different. This is just my personal opinion as to why I'm not a huge fan of it. So when you take a look here, first of all, it has top kind of tabs like this, very similar to Chrome. That's one of the main reasons I went with Arc because of the vertical tabs. I liked it. Over here, if we go and take a look at Amazon over here, and if I open up a new tab and I go to Amazon over here, and I wanna look at, I don't know, some supplements. I could also, actually, I don't wanna do that. Let's take a look at some other supplements over here. Now, the interesting thing is it doesn't block ads right off the gate, right out of the rip. You, you saw, I just downloaded it and I got that initial prompt. It didn't block ads. With Perplexity, it did it right away and just said, do you want it? Okay, cool. That's one thing to take note of that ad blocker is not right away unless I'm missing something. But now you can see over here, I have two different tabs open on Amazon. And what I can then do is click here. Now, the one thing I don't like is that the chat just kind of makes the screen smaller and kind of messes up everything. I don't know why. So like here, it just, eh, not really. But now you see I have this tab over here, but if I go to another one, I can hit at, and then I can hit the other one over here, which is, I believe this one. So then I can say, how are these vitamins different? And it thinks, and I really don't know what LLM or AI it's using. I can only imagine probably ChatGPT OpenAI, but it's, I mean, if this is what you're using it for, this is okay, right? So it's just not what I want to use it for. So I have to ask a question about this page, but if I don't have a page open, ask anything. So that's really where it kind of breaks for me. So I can say, find the cheapest flight from Newark to Orlando for four adults leaving, I don't know, July 1st and returning July 8th on nonstop flights only. I just want to save that for a second because this is one of the reasons why. So if I hit chat, it's going to think, it's going to keep thinking. So now it's going to go to Expedia, go over here, do this. So it did this, but it's not telling me, it's not, it, it, it's really, really high level. And what do I mean by that? Well, let me show you. So if I go into Perplexity's Comet, I can do this. And now you're going to notice that it's going to search. It's going to pull up a window. It's going to go on Google. And this is going to change in a little bit because it's actually going there. You see it's moving. It's browsing for you. It's browsing, it's clicking, it's doing everything that you need, as opposed to just giving you the high level, this is this here, click here if you want this, click here if you want this. Like when I go back to Dia, I still have to think about what's the best price, whether it's Spirit or JetBlue, and I have to look at all these kinds, of, like it's not really, it's giving me a good summary of what I can think of to go for that, but I still have to think. And I don't wanna think, right? So you could see, this is where Comet is doing more agentic AI. And this is just one use case. It's doing this. I also tried this for a reservation and booking a reservation for like a steakhouse. And it does that. It even asks you for your phone number and your name and email just to make sure to confirm. So you could see this. And while we let this run, the other thing I wanted to go into was this. So they also have a thing called skills. So I, I just played with one. I guess it saved it. Maybe that's why, because I re-downloaded it. But morning, where I said, I, I, I made a skill called morning, where it's going to check the weather and Disney stock. Here's the thing. It can't open the tabs for me automatically, but it gives me this. Now, I know there's probably a lot of other skills that you can create with Insidea, but I just don't know what other skills I can do. That's really the thing. 
if I go over here and I say, like, I don't even know where to do, where to do skills. So you can add tabs or files and stuff like that. But I just, I don't know. I don't need a browser to be an AI LLM for me. Like, I don't need that. And that's the thing, right? So like, if I go to search over here where it's pulling from, Dia search or Google search, I don't like that because I don't want Google and I don't want Dia, I want everything. And that's really where perplexity does the best because perplexity at its core is search. On top of that, you have the LLMs built inside for reasoning models. You can choose which one you want, whether it be Anthropic, OpenAI, DeepSeek, you know, all these different ones, Grok. So you have more control over what you're getting, but I'm not just saying that because whatever, because if I go over here, look at this, you see the difference in the responses. So this, you still have to think with this, the cheapest is this total is this, this here or this, the United 582 is your best choice for your criteria. So it's telling me very, very clearly that this is the best one, but other ones that are higher prices are these. So you don't have to be like, which one's the best? It does the thinking for you, which is what I really like. And again, I have to update it. But again, if I go to a new tab, I have right inside of here, the search. I have research. I have all this kind of stuff inside here. I can go in here and I can say which reasoning model I want. I have more control over the the search functionality and all this kind of stuff. So that's where I think that Dia failed for me because from an AI perspective, there's a better option out there. And from a UI perspective, they're very similar, right? So you could see tabs up here, tabs up here. Arc had it way better where you had the vertical, it was more aesthetic, you could do certain things. So I'm not really sure why they, I mean, they went on videos with a bunch of people talking about why they're doing it. And I, I guess I get it, but from my perspective, it's like, okay, well, what else can I do? What inspires your shape? How do you best direct, uh, about best digest information? I, I gave this kind of stuff. Like I want JSON code if I want coding, but like, I don't, I use other tools for this and I, ha I know where the tool's coming from. So like with this, okay, so here I can put a new skill, a uh, custom skill run this. So search the web for this, include photos. It's really just, it's not a, it's more like an auto, you have to make an automation for it to do something, right? Whereas Comet, I can just say, do it. And it just does all that without having those pre-made kind of things. So, I mean, that's just the thing for me because in Comet, I can also do, you know, search daily at 9am for the latest AI news and email me a summary. That's it. You know, it, it's going to do that to proceed. I'll schedule this daily first daily search and reminder on your calendar. So that's the thing, right? Like I just prefer this over this. And there's a lot of use cases out about it that are going to really compound on that and make it more comprehensive. But for me, I pay for Perplexity Pro, why not take that LLM and search and just integrate it into my browser? So for me, having Dia as another LLM on top of it, it doesn't make sense for me. Now, if it was like Arc, like this, where I have vertical and the organization of it and all the customized features of it was something that was in Dia, that's a little bit of a different story because then the UI of the browser would be the reason why I would use it more. Currently, Dia does not have that. It has a very Chrome style. And I'm not gonna download Chrome again, but I did download Chrome and I used the Gemini inside of Chrome. And to be honest with you, this versus Chrome with Gemini inside of it doesn't compare. Chrome with Gemini inside of it blows this out of the water, but I use Google Workspace and you'd have to use that on personal right now. So I, I paid for it to test it out on personal, but primarily use Google Workspace. So it's not for me just yet. I just don't see the value in this just yet. Now for people that are, which is mainly probably where this is geared towards, students, people first break into AI and that kind of thing. So if you're not like a power user of AI and you have multiple LLMs, sure, this is great. If you don't pay for any subscriptions to things and you wanna have AI in this kind of thing. Yeah. D is, D is going to be good for you. But for someone that's constantly using AI and all these tools, it's just not for me. But let me know what you guys think.